Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. I'd like to thank Sages for the opportunity to present my research today. Today, I'll be talking about how we are solving the surgeon ergonomic crisis uh, with this novel device. I have no personal relevant uh, disclosures. So laparoscopic surgery has gained significant popularity over the past two decades, mostly attributable to its improved patient outcomes. However, along with this popularity came with a new wave of uh, literature reporting alarmingly high incidences of physician pain and discomfort among the laparoscopic surgeons. Those who perform the highest volume of laparoscopic surgery tend to have the worst rates of shoulder, neck, and back pain. And while the topic of ergonomic so in laparoscopic surgery is a large one encompassing posture, equipment placement, handle design. The very act of laparoscopic surgery puts a large torque and force on the extremities, culminating in high stresses in the shoulder. This is seen especially when the arms are abducted and forward flexed. The very nature of laparoscopic surgery can put the arms in isometric contraction for prolonged periods, prolonged periods and the repetitive surgical motions are something that it's very difficult to avoid. And to exasperate all this, there's a magnification of forces of loads placed on the hand when the surgeon's arms are extended. To tackle this problem, we worked with the engineers from a local company to design an exosuit composed of a progress progressive mechanical arm support attached to a rigid backing. This device is meant to be worn over the scrubs but under the sterile gown. This technology works by two folds. One, um, there's a rigid backing to prevent slouching. And the other is the progressive arm support. This device is designed to give an upward lift to the arm when it's abducted and flexed away from the body. That's to say, when your arm is at rest, it doesn't offer any support, but as soon as the arm moves away from the body, it begins to provide a smooth progressive upward lift to counteract the effect of gravity. The magnitude of this force is adjustable at the time of fitting. To test the feasibility and the benefit of this device, we designed a prospective randomized crossover study in three phases using surgeons as test subjects. In the first phase of the study, we study the effect of this device on hand dexterity. The second phase, we look at measurable benefits of the device on pain and fatigue. And third phase, we involves testing the device in the operating room with matched operative days. All these phases of study uses randomized crossover design, meaning that the subjects were randomized to doing a task wearing the device, then again without wearing the device, or vice versa. We recruited surgery residents, fellows, and attendings for this study and they were excluded if they had any history of musculoskeletal injury or surgery, or if the device could not fit them properly. In phase one of the study, the subjects were tested using two upper extremity dexterity tests, as well as the FLS tasks. Their completion times were recorded and compared. The first test was the Minnesota Mano Dexterity Test. This is a gross a motor function test of the upper extremities that involves transferring pegs uh, one hand than the other, then there's a peg transfer between the two hands in midair. The Purdue pegboard dexterity test is the fine motor test of the hand, which also involves transferring of pegs, but on a much smaller scale, and you have to construct a series of constructs uh, during the test itself. And I said before, we've also used the FLS task to simulate the laparoscopic motions of surgery. Nine surgery residents were recruited for this first part, and all were able to successfully complete the 11 tasks. As seen here, there's no significant difference between the completion times of those subjects wearing the, the device and those who did not wear the device, suggesting that there's no negative impact on hand motion on these surgeons. This allowed us to move on to the second phase of the study, where we recruited subjects to hold a laparoscopic camera for up to 15 minutes. In this case, we asked the subjects to stand three feet away from a painted target and hold the laparoscopic camera to it. Pain and fatigue evalu evaluations occurred uh, at regular time intervals. They were considered a task failure if the target moved outside of the range of the visible scope or uh, if they tired out due to pain or fatigue and could not complete. Nine surgery residents were again recruited for this study and across the board they experienced a significant decrease in fatigue when wearing the device compared to when they're not wearing the device, as seen on the graph on the right. Wearing the exosuit significantly increased the chance that they would actually complete the task and while uh, most subjects who were going to fail the task failed at 10 minutes. At this point, there was a decrease uh, in pain experienced by those who were wearing the exosuit. In phase three of the study, finally, we tested the device in the operating room during real surgery. Operative schedules were examined one month ahead of time to make sure we have identifying, uh, identified matched operative days in terms of caseload and type. Only full laparoscopic surgery days were included, and a pain inventory was given to the surgeons 
uh, the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, and any increases from baseline were recorded and tested. Finally, all the subjects took a post-test survey. Here's an example of the uh, paint inventory and the uh, post-test survey that we used. Note everything's on a scale of one to five, and we specify particular body parts on the paint inventory. In this phase, we recruited seven subjects who had eligible matching operative days. The average operative time between the two days were well matched, and the uh, surgeries were represented as some of the most common laparoscopic procedures performed. Six out of the seven subjects experienced some reduction of pain when they wore the exosuit compared to when they did not wear the exosuit by the end of the day. The, of these, the greatest of these reductions was a statistical significant reduction in shoulder pain. This makes sense because the device design, is designed to relieve uh, load on the shoulder. Interestingly, there was also a decrease in neck pain, though not statistically significant. We attributed this to the fact that um, you can't slouch forward and therefore you get a better position because of the rigid backing itself. And finally, when we added up all the pain scores, the composite pain score demonstrated that surgeons overall experienced less pain by the end of the day when they were wearing the exosuit compared to when they did not. On the post-test survey, nearly all the surgeons felt a reduction in discomfort wearing the device um, and said that they would consider using this device or a similar device in their practice. Only one surgeon felt hindrance of motion during surgery wearing the device. Now, there are many shortcomings I can talk about, the most important of which is the fact that ergonomic studies really take a long time to prove. Um, it, that's because it takes a long time for repeated injuries to, uh, to really cause a measurable outcome. But we feel that work-related pain is a nice marker for potential ergonomic benefit, which is why we used it in this study. Also, three subjects failed their fitting because their body type didn't fit the uh, prototype exosuit that we had developed. This is being worked on in the future iterations of design. And um, finally, pain and fatigue reporting is subjective to bias. Now, unfortunately, due to the nature of this device, it's impossible to introduce blinding. However, we're using uh, EMG right now in lab to explore uh, objective data in this, in this regard. So in conclusion, wearing the exosuit with progressive arm support is unlikely to, unlikely to have a negative impact on hand motion in laparoscopic surgeons. Progressive arm support during surgery may also help be helpful in reducing laparoscopic surgeon work-related pain, especially in the shoulder. Thank you very much. So if there's, if there's any questions, we would encourage you to come to the mic. I would kick it off. I'm, I'm very intrigued by, your, by this uh, device, and I wanted to ask you and point out, you, this, the pain scores seem to be very low on any individual characteristic, and you used a composite pain score, but it looked like they were all in the range of one, uh, or some of them were even less than one. Um, but my question was really, were there any negative impacts related to the device that people complained of, independent of the, the benefits in reduction of pain that you noted? Uh, in, in, I guess, one of the prior slides, I'm not sure I can go back to it, but it showed that there is some people wearing the device complaining of uh, mild lower back discomfort. And we think this is because the rigid backing is straight at this moment rather than fitting to the, the curvature of the spine itself. And as a result, where the device is touching the lower back may be an area of high, um, higher stress, which, again, is being worked on in the future iterations of design. But in terms of the arms and the shoulders and neck, and surprisingly even the feet, people experienced in general some reduction of discomfort. Is there a question at the mic there? Is that... Great, well thank you very much.